Hi, my name is Penny, and today I'm going to read you a story about Maya Lynn, who was born in Athens, Ohio in 1959. Uh, her parents were both professors at Ohio University, and this is a story about her childhood and about a, about a very important design that she did later on as a student at Yale University. So I put this story on uh, a music stand because I thought it would be easier for you to see the pictures. The book is written by Jean Walker Harvey and the illustrations are by Dow Pumerick. And this is an illustration of Maya Lin herself. In the woods by her childhood home, Maya Lin played with her brother and explored and climbed the many rolling hills. And she named one of them the Lizard's Back. On long walks alone, she searched for birds in the forest. Maya sat still as a statue, hoping to tame rabbits, raccoons, chipmunks, and squirrels. In her house, full of light and open spaces, Maya read books and played chess with her brother. Here she is playing chess. And she built with paper and scraps, and she built tiny towns out of milk cartons and cereal boxes and juice cartons. Her parents, this is her mom, her parents had fled China at a time when people were told what to think and how to think and what to be. Her parents never told Maya what to be or how to think. Maya grew up with art. Her father was an artist and he made things out of clay. And there he is, looks like he's making a pot or a vase out of clay. And her mother was a poet who made art with words. She watched her father form a pot from a mound of clay without any plans or any drawing. Maya too thought with her hands as well as her mind. One day, when Maya looked at the patterns of light and lines on the ceiling of her college library, she imagined that she would become an architect who created buildings with science and art and math. She loved the big curves and all the light and the archways in the beautiful library at her college. <clears throat> While studying overseas, Maya wandered through many different countries and she studied all of the buildings, old and new, learning all she could about how they were built. And you can see how different they are from one country um, to the next. In her last year of college, Maya entered a contest to design a memorial for the soldiers who had died during the Vietnam War. The contest rules said <clears throat> that the memorial must blend in with a park setting and include the name of every soldier who had died or who was missing. And that was almost 58,000 names. That is a lot of names, isn't it? These rules rang true for Maya. She knew the power of names and she believed that a name brings back all the memories of a person more than a photo or a moment in time. And here we can see a photo of some of the soldiers 
who were in Vietnam at that time. In the glow of the autumn sun, Maya walked across the field where this memorial would be built. She walked across the field, dotted with the trees, the site of the future memorial. And through her camera's eye, she imagined that a knife would slice open the earth. And in her mind, she saw a cut in the land healing over time with a polished edge covered from top to bottom with names. An edge that reflected the sky and the grass and all the people who would visit the memorial. And here we have two illustrations that show what that looked like in the lens of Maya Lin's uh, camera. And she imagined that if a knife made a big cut in the hillside and then it was the land, some of the ground was taken out, that a stone, a large granite stone, could be put in there in the ground. And all the names of all the soldiers, all the men and women who died or who were missing in action would be put on the granite stone as part of the memorial. Back at school, here she is back at school, Maya sculpted a model with mashed potatoes. Can you imagine? And then with clay, mashed potatoes would work, wouldn't it? She sketched a soft space of greens and blues. And before mailing her entry, she put her thoughts into an essay to explain what she was trying to do. She wrote that her long polished wall would be a quiet place to remember all those who had died during the war a place to be experienced by walking down and then up and past those names that would seem to go on forever. I'll hold this a little closer so you can see it. And maybe some of you uh, have been to Washington DC. Maybe some of you have seen this memorial. The contest received so many entries that there were enough to fill up a whole airplane hangar with the um, illustrations of the designs uh, that everybody had entered. The lots of famous um, artists had entered um, this contest. The names of the contestants though were hidden so the judges did not know who was entering uh, their designs. And there they are. Can you see the judges stopping to look at Maya Lin's design? Out of 1,421 entries, Maya's design was chosen. It was simple yet strong. It was creative and new. But when they found out Maya was the winner, the judges were shocked. She wasn't famous. She was, she was a young woman still in school. Well, here's Maya. Maya was just as surprised as the judges. All was excitement at first, but then some people, they objected. Some said her design looked like a bat. Some said her design looked like a boomerang or a black gash of shame. Their angry words stung Maya. For months, public hearings were held. Some people wanted to change the design, but Maya was young, but she was brave. She didn't back down. She didn't want to change her design. Finally, you can see, Finally, her design was approved. Maya worked with a team of architects and engineers who devised plans to excavate, that means to dig up the ground, excavate the land, 
build the wall and then the granite was cut and polished and engraved with a soldier's name. The earth was dug up and Maya watched the panels of granite suspended in space and then set in place. A lot of work that took. The Vietnam Veterans Memorial was the first of Maya's many works of art and architecture. Memorials, sculptures, structures, and spaces, both inside and out. Each piece was different, but they all shared Maya's vision. She wanted people to be a part of her art, to look, touch, read, walk around, sit by, and think about. And just like when she was a child who named a hill the lizard's back, Maya names her project often with words from nature. Names such as sounding stones, topo, the wave field, 10 degrees north, and reading a garden. And this is her sculpture called Reading a Garden. And that, I think, no, nope. we have one more, okay. And here's the final page. After naming a piece, the final step in shaping her artwork, Maya Lin, the artist and architect, is ready again to dream, think, and create something new. So she names her piece of art after it's all finished, and then she gives herself some time to go back to her desk. There's a little kitty down there on the floor. Um, to start over. And that is the story of Maya Lin. And I found out that Maya Lin uh, now lives in Vermont, which is not very far from us in Maine, is it? Well, thank you for listening to my story. And I hope you will uh, know more now about Maya Lin than you did before. And maybe some of you would like to create something that uh, is sculpture <clears throat> or some kind of architecture. That would be wonderful. Okay, thank you for listening. Bye-bye.